This is the council meeting of October 20th, 2020. Notice of this meeting stating the date, place, and time has been disseminated as required under the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975. In addition to publishing of the annual meeting schedule, electronic notice was provided on October 16th, 2020 to the local source and star ledger, noting that the meeting would be conducted through the Ring Central program and containing information on how to access the meeting. The same information was posted on the city's website, Linden TV, the bulletin board, and the front door of City Hall. Copies of the agenda, finance report, and personnel reports are also posted on the city's website and Linden TV for the public. This meeting is now called to order. Mr. Clerk, can you please conduct a prayer and flag salute? God of the universe, look thou with favor upon these here assembled and bestow thy guidance upon the members of the governing body in their deliberations. This we ask in thy name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Okay, we have a few housekeeping items here. Uh, please note that members of the public who may be attending are on mute until the public hearing on ordinances or the public comment portion of the meeting. If you wish to be recognized, please use the raised hand icon in the program to identify yourself during those particular times. You will then be give, give your name and address as at any council meeting. Failure to do so will result in your being muted or not recognized further. If you're registered more than once, you will only be recognized to speak one time until your first registration, as with any council meeting. When public comment is open, the ability to register will then be closed. Mr. Clerk, can you please call the roll? Mrs. Orman? Here. Here. Can you hear me? Here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Can the member, can um, Councilwoman Norman or Mayor, can you hear Mr. Bodak when he speaks? I'm going to mute my microphone. Shall I speak? No, you're muted, Joe. All right. Yeah, um, we're going <coughs> to mute the deputy clerk. Okay, Joe. This is Norma. We're doing the role, sorting the role for us. Here. Javik. Present. Caldwell. Present. Mohammed. Present. Cosby. I'm here. Roman. Here. Strano. Here. Blaine. Here. Medina. Here. Hickey. Here. This is Yamakotis. Here. Okay, can we have approval of the minutes of August 18, 2020 regular meeting? Council President, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes of the meeting and ask for a second, please. Second. Mrs. Norman? Yes. Mrs. Say Caldwell again. Yeah. Mrs. Caldwell? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Take it there. Your volume's up. I abstain. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Green? Yes. Medina? Yes. 
Nikki? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Council President, your mic is muted. Also, I, I just want to point out that um, because of the closeness of where you guys are located to each other, the echo is probably going to end up happening again. Okay. We're moving on to ordinances on hearing. We're going to begin with Ordinance 6446. An ordinance to amend and supplement. An ordinance adopting and enacting the revised general ordinances of the city of Lincoln, 1999, passed November 23rd, 1999, and approved November 24th, 1999. And as a be ordained by the Council of the City of Lincoln, Section 1, the traffic, Chapter 7, shall be in the same as hereby amended as follows 7 33 handicapped parking uh, regulations, 7 33 parking on street, delete the uh, listed spots. Okay, uh, has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone that wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Please use the raised hand icon. Okay, I'm seeing uh, there's a number here, SMA102U. Please state your name and address for the record. Okay, you need to unmute yourself. <laughs> okay. Um, I believe they hung up or disconnected. Okay. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Okay, seeing none, could we have a motion, please? Yes, thank you, Council President. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing on ordinance 6446 adopted and ask for a second please second mrs ormond yes Javik. mrs Javik. mrs Javik is voting on this ordinance can you hear me now? You, you just said yes. Yeah. Call yes. Mohammed. Yes. Mohammed. Yes. 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 Roman. Yes. Drown. Yes. Blaine. Yes. Medina. Yes. 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 Ordinance 6447. Yes. 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 Okay, has um, the ordinance been properly published and posted? Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, yes ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone that wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Please use the raise hand icon. Seeing none, can we have a motion, please? Yes. <clears throat> Council President, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing on 6447, 
adopt it and ask for a second, please. Second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? No. Roman? No. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? No. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6448. An ordinance approving the application for a long-term tax exemption and authorizing the execution of a financial agreement with Linden Renewable Energy Urban Renewal LLC. Okay, has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Please use your raised hand icon. Seeing none, could we have a motion, please? Yes, Council President, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing on Ordinance 6448. Adopted and ask for a second, please. Second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? No. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? No. Mrs. Yes. Yamakaitis? Ordinance 6449. An ordinance to amend an ordinance entitled an ordinance establishing a schedule of titles, salary ranges, and regulations for maintaining the classification and salary standardization plan of all employees of the city of Linden passed August 15, 1995 and approved August 16, 1995. Adopting salary schedule 4006. Okay, has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Please use the raised hand icon. Okay, uh, can we have a motion, please? Can we have a motion, please? Uh, is, it's all, is it all clear? Yes. <laughs> we have to follow the rules of the council. You'll have an opportunity after we have a motion and second, council. Okay, go ahead with your motion. Uh, council President, I'd like to move ordinance number 64-49 um, uh, uh, to close the hearing on that ordinance. Um, have the ordinance adopted? Now I request a second. Second. Okay, discussion. Councilman Ryan. Thank you, Council President. This is a salary ordinance. This is changing the IT um, um, professional. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. This is an increase. Clerk is just pulling the paperwork on there. You know what, Joe, don't worry about it, Joe. This, this is, is the salary ordinance that is being discussed in line with the negotiated uh, settlement with the union for 2019. Uh, thank you, Council President. Thank you. Oh. Okay, we had a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call, please? Mrs. Norman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Fuzzy? Yes. Abstain. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 
the bond ordinance approving an appropriation of $286,000 for the acquisition of a rear loader sanitation truck with plow for the Division of Public Works for and by the City of Linden and authorizing the issuance of $271,700 bonds or notes of the city for financing part of the appropriation. Okay, has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Seeing none, could we have a motion, please? Council President, I, I'd like to make a motion to close the ordinance number 6450. Um, have the ordinance adopted, and I request a second. Second. Mrs. Mm -hmm. Ormond? Yes. Gabby? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? It's 50, right? Yes. Yep. Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6451. An ordinance of the city, city council, council, city of Linden, adopting a redevelopment plan entitled Block 339, Lot 5, the former D's dugout, pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law. Okay, has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, ma'am. Has any written communication been received? No, ma'am. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Please use the raised hand icon. Okay, seeing none, can we have a motion, please? Council President, uh, I'd like to move the hearing be closed on Ordinance 64 to 51. The ordinance adopted, and I request a second. Second. Mrs. Norma? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Crosby? Yes. Yes. No. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mrs. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Okay, we're gonna move on to the consent agenda items. All items are listed with asterisks are considered to be routine by the city council and are enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a council member so requests. We have items number one through three, okay? And we also, I just wanna make note, we have a duplicate on there. Uh, it's block 283, lot six for a reimbursement. It's only one reimbursement, okay? Any of the council members wish to speak on the consent agenda item? Okay, seeing none, could we have a motion please? Council President, I request the motion and approval for the consent agenda items one through three and request a second. Second. Mrs. Norman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Okay, we're gonna move on to committee reports and comments from members of the governing body. Okay, Councilwoman Ormond. Thank okay. you, Council. We're gonna move on to you. Go great. ahead, please. Okay, great, thank you, Council President. Uh, good evening, Firstwood residents. I just have a few items. First, I wanna talk about um, our sanitation. You all have received your blue recycle bins and your brown paper bins over the last week or so. If you have not received it, please feel free to reach out to me so we can make sure that DPW gives you your cart, your um, container. Um, if you have a two family house, you only received one, reach out to me, please. Please note there's been a change in the schedule. Um, if you did not get a copy of the adjusted schedule, please reach out to me as well. I don't want DPW being bombarded with phone calls, as you call me, I can make sure that you get a copy of it. Also, the water company is doing 
an extensive water line replacement throughout the first ward. There were multiple streets that are closed off. Um, and it seems like it's a little bit crazy trying to navigate through the community, which it is. But trust me, I feel your pain. It's the same right around my house, um, three and four blocks. You just have to kind of like figure out how to get around. The um, road closures and the mess is just temporary, but the results are going to be long-term and definitely going to be an overall improvement to the old and aging infrastructure that we have here in Linden. Um, the roads will be repaired also once the preliminary work is completed. Leaf pickup will begin at the end of this, at the end of um, November. Um, actually, I should say the beginning of November. Please do not put leaves in plastic bags. We have brown bags that'll be available. You can give me a call if you need a few to get yourself started. And please do not uh, pour them or, or rake them into the catch basins. They cause all sorts of problems with our drainage. Um, that's just some of the uh, uh, maintenance or some of the housekeeping things. Um, what I did want to primarily discuss with my ward is that last night there was a very ugly comment put out on social media. It accuses our council of being um, anti-Semitic. And trust me, we're not anti-Semitic, nor are we anti-safety. Whenever we make a decision, it's based on the public's best interest, um, our health, our well-being, uh, the community overall, executive orders. There's so many different things that go into why decisions are made here on council. With that being said, to our Jewish community, I will continue to help you with anything in, in all concerns that you have, including the ones that are still pending. I will always hear your concerns and be unbiased. I have always assisted with um, your special sanitation pickup during Passover, where a lot of people don't understand your customs and why it is so important. We as a governing body, especially count, uh, the first, ninth and 10th ward, we understand how important it is for Passover to have your sanitation picked up in a special, a special trip. I have assisted in making the process easier for you to celebrate Sukkot, which is another very important holiday. We provided a craft day for your children last year in the spirit of making sure that no child felt as though their holiday was not important. We did it on a day where all of your children, as well as Christian and Muslim children, could come and enjoy. And we had crafts that crossed the span of all religions who celebrate their holidays in the month of December. We also made sure that when we had our grand opening for the Wells Park, that that was done on a day after church hours, but also after your Sabbath, to ensure that everyone was invited and no one felt as though they were not gonna be part of our community. I just wanna say that not only I, but this whole entire council, we embrace all faiths, all ethnicities, all genders, those who are married regardless of who their spouse is, and just anything that I guess makes you feel as though you may stand out or be different, we embrace everyone and we treat no one differently. With that being said, if you have any questions, you know that you can reach out to me. You know that you can call me, email me, and I will always return your call. Last on the list, I would like to address um, the noise issue that we seem to have um, now in spurts in the, first, in the first ward. We are actively addressing the quality of life, the loud music, the excessive and illegal parking, that goes on in District 1-1, Washington Avenue and the surrounding streets. We have not ignored your pleas or your concerns. Just rest assured that we are taking all action to make sure that um, your quality of life is not diminished. Uh, and that ends my report. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Norman. Okay, from the second ward, Councilman Barry Javik. Thank you, Council President. As uh, chairman of the fire committee, um, the Fire Prevention Bureau collected the following monies during the month of September 2020, a total of $8,518.19. Regarding the Linden Fire Department ambulance billing, 
the amount of $54,551.05 for September 2020 have been added to the total deposits for 2020, totaling $542,224.63. Uh, good evening, Sapkin Ward. Uh, well, we finally started milling and paving the ward, uh, Minor, Spruce, Lafayette, and others to follow. We will also be replacing handicapped doors that have been not been done or in need of place. Our yeah. last street scheduled for milling and paving will be uh, West Elm Street, which is now Cement Street. And that will be done the full length from Stile Street to Wood Avenue. On the corner of Lafayette Street and West Elm Street, we always had a situation with flooding. Upgrades to the storm sewer will take place this Friday to finally solve this problem. School's back in session. Please be mindful and careful around in the morning and the afternoon. Half day sessions are in effect. And please be respectful to the crossing guards. They are there to help you. Our special improvement district office has been reviewing architectural drawings uh, for the uptown area. This is in the initial stages right now. We are also looking into initiating the second phase of the Wood Avenue uh, sidewalk restoration. And as the holidays are coming, we will have new decorations adorning the downtown. Also, we have been lucky enough to have our schools present uh, scarecrow decorations in front of City Hall for October. Please stop by, take a look. I'm sure you'll enjoy and be impressed. Also, the Board of Health wanted me to remind you, uh, we'll be initiating a uh, shot program for information call 908-474-8409. Uh, recently, there has been a significant uptick also in um, COVID cases. So please be safe, be healthy, be responsible. This will help us all. I can be reached at 908-494-4608 or email me at djavik at linden-newjersey.org. In addition, with the leaf now falling, call me if you need some leaf bags. Council President, and the report. Thank you, Councilman Javik. I'm just going to go back to Councilwoman Ormond for the uh, finance report. Thank you, Council President. Um, approval is requested for the following finance actions. The payment of bills totaling $1,157,747.71. Bills have been signed by the mayor, council president, and the finance chairwoman, and a detailed check register and vouchers are on file in the clerk's office. We are in receipt of the investments made by the city treasurer for the month of September at the rate of 0.20%. In the Department of Finance, the approval is granted for the CFO to submit the best practices worksheet to the Division of Local Government Services by the November 3rd, 2020 deadline. I move all three items and ask for a second, please. Second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Crosby? Yes. No. Roman? Yes. Strano? Uh, <clears throat> yes. Blaine? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Okay, from the third ward, we have Councilwoman Monique Caldwell. Thank you, Council President. Greetings, neighbors. I hope this message finds you well and in good spirit. As the chair of code and construction, there was a total of permits for September of um, an income of $141,663,000. Dollars, a total of zoning permits for $3,475 with a total income of $145,138. As for the IT committee, um, as I stated before, um, Teleapp did a proposal for the city to go with Google Suite um, I am waiting on direction on the budget because I know that we're 
um, basically um, cutting back on things because of the COVID-19. So um, hopefully we Josh to do a presentation of the Google Suite for um, the city. Um, maybe next meeting, I want to let my neighbors know um, I've been walking my my talking, walking, you know, my neighborhood and let the neighbors know that um, on Henry Street, 540 East Henry Street, the stump will eventually be removed. I've uh, contacted DPW. Um, there's a cracked sidewalk at 545 East Henry Street. I've also informed DPW they'll be taking care of it with uh, the other sidewalks. Um, 600 Clark Street on the corner of Clark and Henry. The light will be fixed in the next couple of days. I've contacted PSDNG and um, it should be, your light should be on within the next week. Um, as for Stone Place, there are branches basically connecting. Um, DPW is gonna get to that and trim that tree because it's very dark. And when it's dark, you know, it's not safe. Um, and on Elm Street, Middlesex Street, and Clark Street, there will be new lights um, placed there. However, it's going to take some time. Um, it, they're four weeks out, so I just want to let my neighbors know that. Uh, there will be a stop sign on Cleveland and Maple, on the corner of Cleveland and Maple, because people keep on running that um, street because you see the stop sign in front. So the neighbors have asked, requested that that be um, installed. So that's a work in progress as well. I'm aware of your concerns about the house on Washington Street. Um, your quality of life is important to me um, and Councilwoman Ormond. We've been working diligently with the mayor, the police and coding construction and the fire department. And I thank you all. So we are working on the parking issues and I think it's calmed down somewhat. So um, I just want to let you know that, you know, we're working on it and your um, concerns have not gone on deaf ears. As for, I don't know, uh, council president, could I tell them about voting and where they can go to vote? I don't know if I could bring this up because a lot of people have been asking me, where can I vote? You can mention uh, your uh, polling place. And okay, okay. I just want to make sure that's okay. So you can mail your ballot because you, you receive your ballot, but I would not um, encourage that because there's been issues with the mail. You can either go to 271 North Florida Street and uh, show them your ID with your ballot, or you could go to the promenade on Wood Avenue between the Dollar General and the post office, and they have a video camera there. I think that's the safest place to go to cast your ballot. And also on November 3rd, the PAL will be open, but they will only be allowing you to vote by ballot unless you have a handicap. Um, and to the neighbor that I met the other day in the morning while I was taking my morning stroll, I have called the Volkswagen dealership with your concern about the service um, associates flying down Clark Street. And I asked him, could he talk to his people to slow down? And he said he will have a conversation because I, I told him we will use the video from your ring and I will submit it to the police department. Um, I just want, again, I want to give a special thank you to the DPW, the fire department, the police department. And I want, I want to say a special um, thanks to the mayor, especially with the movie theater and, you know, uh, doing the Black Panther, dressing in, in the Black Panther. That was extra. And that was, you always go above and beyond. And for my neighbors with their concerns about the promenade, I have addressed it with the chief of police. I agree with you. Um, DPW is trying to clean it up as soon as possible, but we have some people there that are doing some um, unethical things and um, unclean, you know, um, it's, it's just not, I understand. I'm seeing the videos, I'm getting the text messages, I'm getting the email. We are listening to you and we're working to resolve the issue. And please stay healthy and wear a mask. Thank you.
Thank you, Councilwoman. Okay, from the fourth ward, we have Councilman Alfred Muhammad. Thank you, Council President. Good evening. I'd just like to report on the fourth ward park. The lighting has been installed, and I'm not going to say more on what the quality of life work is being done in the fourth ward. I'd like to thank the sanitation department for completing the uh, placement of the recycle bins as well as the paper bins add to the quality of life and also add to uh, better sanitation. Um, if you need to reach me, I generally walk up each of the main drags every, every, every day on my way to City Hall. You can reach me. I'll be going up Roselle Street tomorrow. Anybody needs to reach me? Or well, you can reach me by telephone at 908-463-4843. And from the law committee, I'd just like to report. We have asked people from the council to refrain from discussing police action on Facebook or any other media. Leave the police work to the police department who is doing a great job. Thank you, Council President. That concludes my report. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, fifth ward, Councilwoman Cosby. Thank you, Councilwoman. Are we being timed? Yes. So good evening, everyone. I just wanted to say also, there is an uptick. I know that Councilman Javik did mention that. Uh, we learned about it last night, an uptick here in London in the month of October. So we want to just all be vigilant and careful and you know, do what we can to stop the spread of the coronavirus. We want to get out of this pandemic as soon as we possibly can. From There's nothing from any of the committees or commissions. Like I said many times, the Environmental Commission has not met since the pandemic began. They didn't do a virtual meeting and it's in part because they don't have a quorum. They don't have enough commissioners. The environmental commission is appointed by the mayor and we still have not had appointments made. I know some people have volunteered. I volunteered, but I was deemed ineligible. Either way, you know, these appointments need to be made. So I'm just putting out there again, please look for people who want to serve and so that this commission can go about doing the work for our city. The Environmental Commission is a really important commission. I don't understand why it's being ignored this way. Uh, the Street of the Week program was mentioned several months ago. Recently, Elizabeth Avenue, actually Fifth Ward and Eighth Ward, was a part of the Street of the Week. We don't have the report, however, but when we do, we will announce the results. The Street of the Week, they had, you know, the police department would say they were counting and making sure as far as um, speeders go to try and slow folks down and they had signs posted and things like that. The street repair in the Fifth Ward has been completed on Alexander and Adams and Grant Street will be completed next week. And I'm pleased to inform the residents that the resolution that was on for introduction tonight for Alexander Avenue, and I'm grateful to the police department, specifically traffic for not coming to, you know, the whole political pressure thing with me first and all like that. And they took the intel that they got from their investigation the second time around, because I don't know what happened the first time, but the residents wanted to be a, a one way to prevent the speeders flying down St. George from St. George, flying over the speed humps and, you know, just disturbing the peace. So we will have a one way from Dill Avenue to St. George's Avenue after the second reading of the ordinance. So I appreciate the police department for that. Also wanted to mention, if you'll see the work being done on St. George's Avenue, that's the safety project coming all the way down. And the chief confirmed last night, the police chief, that my request and with at the urging and support of Mr. Nujwe, who's in my ward, the push to stop light that was requested as part of the safety project at 1600 Elizabeth Avenue is still going to be done. We just don't know when it's part of the safety plan. So I'm grateful for that because we don't wanna have any more loss of life there. And trash day is tomorrow in district five. So if you have bulk waste, put it out. Um, make sure it's visible. Try not to put it where there's a car blocking it so it can get picked up. They're not collecting cardboard. Follow the schedule and what is permitted to be placed out. 
Um, we had a cancer, the fifth annual cancer awareness walk. We try to do a little bit virtual. We had a couple of folks come out. So what we decided, um, the Roshana Cosby Civic Association, is to keep it open virtually until November 30th. The beneficiary this year is Mr. Rouse, who's a fifth ward resident, cancer survivor, still in treatment. And the donations will help him because he has to pay a hefty amount, um, even with his insurance for his treatment. So we want to bless him with the donation. So if anybody wants to give, all the donations are tax deductible through the 501c3 organization. You can give through Eventbrite or you can go to the Roshana.com and get more information about donations. Um, voting reminder. Um, there was a reminder, just everybody be clear. If you got your ballot, that's how you vote. If you lost your ballot and you can't vote with the ballot that was lost, you will have to do provisional, which means you are required to go to the polling location. Fifth Ward has one polling location, that is school number four. You'll enter school number four on Mildred Avenue in the back parking lot. And you will have to um, go and sign a book, make sure your signature still matches, and you'll be able to do a provisional ballot. There's no machine voting unless you are physically unable to write or you are blind, legally blind. So you can drop your ballot off there if you wanted to do that as well. The next community meeting is gonna be virtual again. And I'm, I'm trying to pick the date to be announced. It's going to be in December, but I'll share that information as usual. I just wanted to mention also on the ballot, don't forget there are questions one, two, and three. And question number one is a hot topic. I know many years ago, it was uh, in, in our city that we actually had a resolution, I believe it was, supporting legalizing recreational marijuana, so on and so forth. Um, as this has progressed, we'll see, you notice that the state representatives did not vote on this. They're leaving it up to the many of the ill-informed voters to vote for number one, which is the recreational use of cannabis. N meanwhile, it's not being decriminalized and there's no intention to, um, to cure convictions. So I invited the two Senate sponsors to have a forum on tomorrow and they chose not to participate. So when you go vote, just remember that these folks don't want you in Linden to get the information directly from them with regard to this question on the ballot. So just put that out there for you. Know how you vote and what you vote for. There are three questions, one, two, and three, and be informed. Just so people know also number three is the question on the ballot. It's going to not use the census data that was collected this year. It's gonna keep the districts exactly the same for the next two years, which means if there is an increase or of representation that could be someplace, even in our local level, as far as districts, you won't get it because these folks don't want to push the elections back a couple of months and they want to maintain whatever control they currently have. And I think that's all I have. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I can always be reached at 908-718-7933 or my city email is rcosby at london-nj.org. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman uh, Roman, sixth ward. Thank you, Council President. I am going to attempt to this all out in the a lot of time I may need an extra minute if that's okay. Um, good evening, Sixth Ward and Linden. I just want to start my report uh, by giving my condolences to the family of Jack Martins uh, who passed away yesterday. Jack was a prominent member of the Portuguese community in Elizabeth. Uh, I've known him a long time. He was a, uh, was a political photographer. You know, did a lot of photography, knew a lot of history of the area. And uh, honestly, he was just a great human being. Uh, he was a role model to a lot of people. So um, God rest his soul and uh, condolences to his family. Um, I want to start with talking about trees. Uh, we are going to have some plans. We have taken a lot of trees out of Sixth Ward and all over the city. We lost a few in the storm, uh, though we didn't lose as many Sunnyside. But if you do want a new tree, please contact me immediately. I am have to submit a list uh, for new tree planting by the end of the week. Uh, the sidewalk project for 2020 has been delayed 
Uh, there was an issue with the contracts. Um, so that uh, engineering is working through that and I thank them for that. Um, so if you and I have discussed um, sidewalks, you know, trust me that they're going to be done. Just be, please be patient. Unfortunately, some of the work that will be done this year, uh, most of it will be done uh, in the spring. Um, but if there is an emergency spot, please contact me and I will uh, come take a look at the emergency and try to get it done this year. Uh, six Ward Paving, East Linden Avenue was completed over the last week. Uh, I'm really impressed with the engineering department uh, with their pre-construction meeting um, and how quickly they got it done. Uh, and, and they didn't cause a whole lot of traffic. So thank you to the trans um, traffic department, Linden Police Department. East Linden Avenue is a very busy street. Uh, I went off pretty flawlessly. Uh, and it is, it, uh, it's a brand new street down there. It was a $225,000 project. 125,000 came from uh, the normal six board paving budget and 100 of it came from the freeholders um, infrastructure grant. So I appreciate them for giving that to us this year. And, and it's a COVID time, a lot of cuts are happening. I appreciate them not cutting that grant. Uh, I also wanna thank Rosedale and Rose Hill Cemetery who's spending nearly $20,000 to do the striping on East Linden Avenue. The striping is going to slow people down. Uh, and just in case you don't get that point, uh, down the line, uh, East Linden Avenue will be part of the Linden Police Department Street of the Week program. Um, cars in the morning and cars real late at night regularly travel over 50 miles an hour on East Linden Avenue. Um, sometimes I'm guilty of going too fast on my way to work. Uh, and, and with the new striping, uh, obviously everyone will be going slower. However, if you don't, uh, we will have added enforcement there in the future. So consider that kind of a warning. Um, West Munsell is also on the repaved list. Uh, that is down the road uh, we wanted to get East Linden Avenue done because it was just a heavily traveled street. Uh, so be patient on that. It's already halfway done. It will um, be the rest, the rest of the half will be done uh, and some added striping to slow the speeders down will come there as well. Uh, in the spring, all of West Linden Avenue will be done from Stiles to Wood Avenue. This is done by state aid and um, this should coincide with the remainder of the widening project from Walmart, which is finally coming to fruition. After 10 years, as you know, Linden Ave uh, and Stiles, Linden Ave and Wood Avenue in the sixth ward will both be widened under that project. So just everyone be patient. There's gonna be a lot of construction over the next six months or so. Uh, food drop this Saturday, October 24th, the county will be having uh, their weekly food distribution. This one will be at King University at 9 a.m. Uh, these are going on until December, every single Saturday. So please look out for them. Even if you don't need, like if you don't emergently need food, come to it, get the box or two of food and save your money for something else. Uh, save it for a rainy day, put it in savings. You don't know what the future is gonna hold with COVID. Uh, so come to this uh, food distribution. We give you a big box uh, full of all kinds of nutritious main brand foods. Uh, and, and you guys can, and you and your family can eat on that. Um, so, uh, just two more things, Council President. I just want to speak on the last few weeks. We have been having an issue over at the old Walmart property and a couple different car meets that have been going on there. Um, loud noises, the mufflers, the, the donuts, the burnouts. Uh, it sounds like they're drag racing. Um, this is mostly in the seventh ward. Um, however, our Smith and Hampton neighborhood is directly across the street. And I'll be honest with you, it's unbearable for me to listen to, and I'm all the way over near the train station. So I can't imagine uh, what it's like for Lenny or for Sharon or for, uh, you know, I have a 96 year old um, living there still that has been in the house since the day it was built in, uh, I think like the 40s or 50s. Um, so I, I, I can't imagine what that's like going through, but I really want to um, thank Chief Hart, uh, Captain Cassiopo for all the work that they're doing. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Councilman Strano for working with me on this, uh, hearing the, the vocal concerns of my neighbors um, and, and working on this uh, immediately as he heard about it as well uh, from his constituency. So uh, we, we are not everywhere. The Linden Police Department is not everywhere. They are taking care of a lot of things going on in the city. Uh, we have limited resources, but together, uh, working together, there's already an action uh, in place. I'm confident that through this work, these car meets will uh, be a thing of the past in this area. Um, just one more thing uh, in regards to the election. Um, this is certainly the most important election in my lifetime. 
over the last three or four years since I was elected to Sixth Ward has had an incredible turnout percentage. In fact, uh, this past July when I was reelected, 67% of the Sixth Ward voted. Uh, and that number represents the largest turnout in the entire county uh, for one district. And it's not even close, to be honest with you. Uh, so the Sixth Ward is paying attention. Linden is paying attention. Uh, and that, would be, that being said, as Councilwoman Ormond and uh, Caldwell and uh, Rashana, Councilwoman Cosby had said previously, there's several ways to vote. But my opinion, the safest way is steal your vote by mail and put it in the promenade drop box. As soon as you're walking from the promenade, there's a box right there. It's under clean surveillance uh, and it's picked up every day by the County Board of Elections. So if for some reason you still have to go and vote provisionally or you didn't get, um, you're going to vote on election day, school six will be open, uh, but you can only vote provisionally. Honestly, your vote won't get counted for a few days later, obviously, because you're casting it on election day. Um, but it actually takes longer to do a provisional ballot than it would just filling out the ballot that you've already been given and dropping in that drop box. To receive your ballot, there's an email, ucvote at ucnj.org. You can email your information to and they'll get you a new one or give them a call, 908-527-4123, and they will work with you to get you a new ballot. Uh, that being said, anyone have any questions about it, <coughs> call me, 908-494-5784. Council President. Uh, actually, one more thing. Know that the council can see this here, um, but Jay Scott over at Shaven Groove on Roselle Street, he's got this, uh, these hoodies he's selling. I just bought one. Um, they're very affordable. It says upland and downland across the tracks and they're very comfortable and awesome. So if anyone wants one of these, reach out to me. I'll get you the link. Thank you, Council President. That concludes my report. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Strano from the 7th Ward. Yes, Council President, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. All right, um, I've got the uh, personnel report for the month of uh, October of 2020. There is, um, I think, eight items on here. Yes, I'm correct. Um, well, starting off with the police department, uh, we're accepting the resignation in good standing of Markel Parker, police officer, effective October 1st of 2020. Uh, item two is in the fire department's permission to begin background checks for the hiring of seven firefighters. Three is in the Board of Health. A, appointment of Alexis Rivera to the position of Secretary of the Board of Health at the annual salary of $3,000, effective November 1st of 2020, subject to the approval of the Board of Health. B, is the approval of 16 days of discretionary overtime for Nancy Koblis to be paid at straight time due to the additional time that she worked during the COVID-19 crisis. Four, in the municipal court, a is the uh, approval of a change in title of Susan Sanchez to the Deputy Municipal Court Administrator at the salary of $91,063, and that's effective October 21st of 2020. B is to approve the change in title of Lindsay Parker to the Interim Municipal Court Administrator at an additional salary of $5,000, effective October 21st of 2020. Five in the tax assessor's office, A is accepting the voluntary resignation in good standing of Fatima Miller, clerk one effective September 28th of 2020. B is the approval to post for a full-time clerk one due to her resignation. Six in construction code is uh, A, increase the hours for code enforcement officer trainee not to exceed 29 hours per week. Previously advertised, but not to exceed it was previously advertised to not exceed 19 and a half hours. Seven is in the Department of Community Services. This is Division of Public Works. A is the appointment of Kiari Smith as a laborer, uh, tier two at the rate of $15 an hour pending the completion of all pre-employment requirements effective November 4th of 2020. B is to approve the change in title for Reuben Lopes to the civil service designation of sanitation truck driver with the internal designation of automated sanitation truck driver tier two at the rate of 23.50 an hour 
effective October 21st, 2020. C is to approve the change in the title for Daniel Crock, the sanitation truck driver tier two at the rate of $23 per hour, effective October 21st of 2020. D is approve the change in title for Shane Gillette, the heavy equipment operator tier two at the rate of 26.50 per hour, effective October 21st of 2020. E is to approve the change in title for Craig Lambert, the equipment operator tier two at the rate of $25 per hour, which will be effective October 21st of 2020. F is to approve the post for two labor positions. Uh, and that's in the Division of Public Works. Division of Buildings and Grounds, A, is to accept the voluntary resignation of good standing of Kashawn Glover, a laborer, effective October 9th of 2020. Eight, in personnel, approve the carryover of vacation time due to the COVID-19 crisis. B, is approval of the FMLA, NJFLA request, which are on file with the personnel division. Uh, move for approval of the- uh, Councilman. Court and press the second. Councilman, before you move that report, um, under Division of Buildings and Grounds, there was a D that was supposed to be there. Um, I'm not sure which version you have, but it should have been to approve posting for a one for a laborer's position. I don't have that on my report, uh, Mr. Vardy. It, it should be there. Can I add it? Yes, sir. So we're going to add posting for laborers position. It, uh, this will be item B in the Division of Buildings and Grounds. Thank you for the correction. Uh, I'd like to um, move that report as amended. Request a second. Second. Mrs. Dorman. Yes. Javik. Yes. Bolvar. Yes. Mohammed. Yes. Crosby. No. Roman? Yes. Strano? Yes. Wayne? Yes. Regina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mrs. Jimmy Yes. Okay, um, how am I doing on time, Council President? Um, okay. Go ahead, uh, Councilman Strano. All right, um, this is my uh, local uh, news for my uh, my ward. First of all, I want to commend the Mayor's Youth Commission for a wonderful job that they did with the um, driving movies at the airport. I finally was able to get out to see the uh, uh, Black Panther movie, which is a movie that I happen to like a lot, so it was a good time. Um, and uh, we had a, a good turnout. Uh, I can't believe how well the weather has co cooperated through uh, all of the event, uh, days that we had the movies. Um, but um, I just want to give my accolades to everybody that was involved with that. It was great. I hope it's something we can do again in the future. Um, secondly, um, you know, I, I, we were discussing we, the, our, our website in the city of Linden is um, really not user friendly. I, I myself have had times trying to navigate through it, um, especially when I'm trying to look up an ordinance. Um, but um, I believe that, uh, you know, this is going to be brought to the attention of the IT department and our uh, vendor to see if we can make this a, a little more user friendly for uh, the public as well. Um, but just be patient, we'll, we'll get there. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that um, uh, as the chair of the uh, airport committee, we are in receipt of a letter from the New Jersey Department of Transportation from the uh, aviation division. Um, and I have a letter here. I'm going to read it real quick. Um, this is from the state of New Jersey Department of Transportation, dated October 15th of 2020 to Mr. Paul Dudley regarding Linden Airport annual safety and security inspection. Dear Mr. Dudley, on July 30th, 2020, I conducted an annual safety and security inspection at the reference facility. Overall, the majority of the airport is in relatively good condition. No discrepancies were found. This is updated on 10, 15, and 20. Please feel free to contact me at any time. Should you have any questions regarding this inspection? And this is sincerely Anthony Paris, uh, Aeronautical Operations Specialist for Bureau of Aeronautics. Uh, just wanna let you know the public know that uh, things are uh, looking good over there. And uh, thank Mr. Dudley and our engineering department because um, 
our uh, uh, engineer is also involved with the uh, uh, periodic inspections there as well. Um, I just want to mention that we're going to be having um, uh, Ordinance 6455 read for uh, introduction tonight. And that includes making uh, West 15th Street a one way uh, in its entirety. Um, I just want everyone to know that this is not something that's going to be cast in stone. If it proves to be problematic, uh, it can be amended or, 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 or redacted. So uh, this is basically going to be a pilot. We're going to try it out um, and, and see how it goes. Uh, my fears is that it's going to turn into a speedway, but uh, that remains to be seen. Um, on a sad note, um, we lost a long term, a long time committee person last month, and that was uh, Pauline Blahuda. She was near and dear to a lot of us. Uh, she was a tough old gal. Anybody else, I don't think, would have lived as long as she did. Uh, and I just want to send my heartfelt condolences out to her family. In addition to that, her very good friend and our very good friend and those that have been on council for a while remember her, uh, Jessica Sheehy's mother, Karen Sheehy, a long time uh, uh, you know, member of the community, <coughs> different aspects. Um, but um, she passed away to, at an early age and uh, I want to send my condolences out to um, just her children, Karen's grandchildren. Um, her nephew, Dominic, and also to uh, Dennis, her husband. And that concludes my report, Council President. Thank you, Councilman Strano. Okay, Councilman Blaine from the 8th Board. Greetings, every greetings, everyone, especially all the residents in the 8th Ward. Um, with, with great sadness, uh, I, I, I just want to say that um, I, I, we hear the cries of the Eighth Ward about the gun violence that uh, we've experienced lately. Uh, just know that there's been an uptick in the state and we here in Linden have experienced it, especially those of us who live in the Eighth Ward. The police department is working very vigilantly to uh, address these issues. They, they hear our concerns and later on this evening you'll hear a statement from the police chief as well as the mayor to address the concerns that we all are aware of in the eighth floor. Um, as you most of you have noticed, we received our garbage cans, our uh, brown and blue recyclables. There's a new schedule that came with the can and I know a lot of us are not aware of it because I've seen a lot of blue and brown cans out today. And uh, I even myself, um, forgot about the new schedule and had my blue and brown cans out. And on that note, I wanna mention that if you're experiencing uh, your cans not being picked up in the eighth ward, uh, please contact me and John Benedetto. He, um, he's a really good guy. He uh, comes back to address our concerns. And I've had conversations with him about debris being left behind with when picking up garbage cans and he's going to meet with the sanitation department to address that issue. So hopefully that'll be resolved. He's a stand up guy and I believe in him. So we'll work with him. Uh, secondly, bulk garbage day is tomorrow for Elizabeth Avenue and the Chandler side of the eighth ward. And on the Greer Avenue side, it is October 28th. So again, tomorrow on the Elizabeth Avenue and Chandler Avenue side is tomorrow morning. So place your, your garbage, your bulk garbage out in front of your house, uh, away from the cars so uh, we can get that cleaned up. On that same note, I wanna revert back to what I was saying about the garbage cans. Let's be mindful and respectful of our neighbors when we put our garbage cans out. Do it in, in a timely manner, like after six o'clock and, and once the garbage is picked up, I mean, let's, let's make things look a lot, little neater and nicer in our community by pulling your garbage cans back to the side of your house or in the back of your house when you can. I, I noticed that we don't have it in our ward, but there's some of the wards that really don't have a side. If you have row houses, you don't really have a side of your house to put it on. But those of us who do have uh, 
sides of the house or backyard, uh, pull you, pull you, be respectful and, and pull your cans in the back. On, on a more serious note, um, COVID is alive and well. And I know a lot of people have lost their jobs and, and may not be financially uh, where they once were. So um, I'm happy to announce this Saturday at King College, there's a food distribution um, going on Saturday morning at nine o'clock. The first 2000 cars to arrive will receive a fresh produce and uh, a food package. Uh, all you have to do is just show up with your car, clean your trunk. Um, they'll give you a nice package. Um, it, it's, it's helpful, especially during these times. Um, those of us who are going to partake in Halloween. Oh, boy. Let's be mindful that COVID is alive and well. Uh, all children must have their masks. Let's, let's adhere to the science. Even though they may have a costume on, you still must have a mask. If you're giving away candy, uh, you can't have a, a basket where all the kids are digging and grabbing for candy because that's not safe. Um, if you're not going to partake in it, cut your light off, let the kids know that you're, you're, you're going to abstain this year and hopefully we'll be back around next year. I, I look forward to better times in the city. I, I, I know we'll get there. Let's just work together in, in, in health wise and, and with the police department and everything else that's going on. I, I know better times ahead of us. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, Councilman Armando Medina, Ninth Ward. Thank you, Council President. Good evening, everyone. To those folks in the Ninth Ward. Uh, Council President, I might need an extra minute or so, just that's okay. why. I do have some issues I want to address for the folks in the Ninth Ward. Um, so just want to touch on some quality of life concerns that uh, have been coming across my desk uh, quite often. Uh, and I share these same these same, uh, these same uh, quality of life uh, issues with Councilwoman Hickey, but I just want to make sure folks know we're, we're hearing you loud and clear. Um, and there's only so much that we can do, um, that, excuse me, what our police department can do, given the circumstances that we're going through um, 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 these days and, and they're stretched out thin, but it's not forgotten. We're not ignoring you. Just want to quickly recap. I know they're getting a ton of complaints on noise uh, when it comes to these modified vehicles um, and whatnot. These are people that live here. Um, you know, I have no idea why they do these things, but I know it's a nuisance and it seems to always start up between the hours of 10 p.m. and, and 2, and 2 a.m. in the morning. Um, you know, just the other day, there were, there were cars racing side by side on Orchard Terrace and Dewitt Terrace. And, you know, again, we, we have other bigger issues in, in the city of Linden. Uh, but let me tell you, the chief is aware of this. The patrol captain's aware of this. Uh, and they will get these guys. Eventually, they will get these guys. Um, also, dog waste, for some reason, I can't believe I'm talking about this again, but it's becoming a problem again. You know, you go, you go to any of our parks, and it's just huge amount uh, of dog waste in the parks, on the sidewalks. Even the other day, um, before school started, just picking up lunch, a lady stepped on dog waste at McManus, right on the curb. And these are kids. So I, I have no idea why people cannot be responsible pet owners or dog owners. I just cannot get it. I don't get it. Um, it's frustrating. It's hard to catch these people. And believe it or not, I go, out for, I go out for walks. And when I see a big dog and I see someone with no bag in their hands, I start freaking out. Like, oh my gosh, should I say something? Um, so, uh, it, it's a big problem. Also, the littering, I hear you loud and clear around our, around our parks. It seemed like uh, people, and I brought this up in, in, in prior council meetings, and the BW are doing a good job. They're trying to keep up with the litter. Uh, people, they park by Wilson Park. They have their dinners, lunch, whatever, whatever it is. And then they just, instead of walking seven, eight feet to dump it, they just drop it all, drop it right on the street. And it's so annoying. Again, I walk a lot in the neighborhood, and I I'm constantly um, picking up litter. Uh, I know we have a, a pandemic, but I wash my hands right after and I, and I, throw, it, I throw it away in the nearest receptacle. Um, you know, I, I love our community and um, I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible. I'm only one guy and I ask people, you know, if you see something in, in the street, please pick it up. 
throw it in my can, throw it, throw it in the next nearest uh, receptacle if it's on the curb and whatnot. So I ask people, please, please um, keep our community clean. Um, I also been receiving some complaints. I will be talking to the dealership over there on St. George and uh, right next to the Delta, I believe they're called Prestige. I'd like to test drive their vehicles on North Shore Terrace uh, with their customers. So uh, see if I can just uh, say hello to them, introduce myself and uh, see if they can be uh, a little more mindful uh, when they decide to go test their vehicles um, and residential neighborhoods. Uh, so just wanna make sure I point, I point those, those items out to the folks in the ninth ward also, as my colleagues mentioned before, uh, the new recycling cans were rolled out in the ninth ward. We did have some issues with scheduling. Some cans were not delivered along Robertson Road, but we, we got all, all that taken care of by, uh, by Tuesday. Actually, DPW was out on Saturday of last week and delivering some cans, and I think they wrapped up the rest on Tuesday. Some folks, for some reason, did not receive the new schedule. If you need the schedule, give me a call. I have it as a picture. I have the link. I can send you all that information. Uh, it's going to take some time to get used to it, the rotating uh, recycling days, but eventually we'll get there. I know there have been some issues with cardboard. It's a big issue, big issue here. Um, I'm, you know, DPW is trying to do the best they can. I know we have new families and whatnot that moved in, a lot of cardboard. It gets stuck in there, and I tell people, just read the instructions, cut it up the best you can, and throw it in there. I'm, a, I'm, I'm an individual that don't... I do not produce a lot of cardboard myself. A lot of people do a lot of online ordering, so everyone is different. So I just tell folks, if you need another can, fill out the paperwork, we'll get you another can. It's a $60 one-time fee. Um, so if you need one, you could definitely, you have the option for that. So I tell folks that, okay? Also, uh, I'm noticing that folks are putting the cans on the street. I get a ton of complaints that we don't get our streets um, swept. And when we finally do, Guess what? We came to sweep it because the cans are in the street. So I ask people, please put the cans on the curb. Do not put them on the streets because that yesterday we finally got a sweeper, <laughs> you know, and uh, guess what? Couldn't effectively uh, sweep the street because the cans were in the streets. So I tell folks, please be mindful of street cleaning days when you're putting out the can, especially when it's a holiday week and garbage collection gets pushed up a day, which is uh, normally be on Thursday. We would normally be on Wednesday collection, but in the holiday week, we get pushed up to a Thursday. So please be mindful of that. And also, as Councilman Blaine um, mentioned earlier, please try to put your cans away. Uh, for some reason, folks are leaving it in the front. Uh, I know the mayor brought this up last night, um, but you know we wanna keep our community looking clean, not, not only in the ninth ward, but throughout the city of Linden. We wanna keep our community attractive to families, uh, potential buyers or whatever the case may be, but we want to maintain Linden. Uh, uh, it's a beautiful city. Anywhere you go in the city of Linden, uh, we're not perfect, but you can honestly say any part of Linden that you go into, you see beautiful homes, well manicured homes. People take pride in Linden. So please help us keep it that way. Okay, we can't do everything for everyone. We, we need participation. And that's what we're asking people. That's what I'm asking folks in the ninth ward. Please help me. Um, Real quick on the sidewalk list. I did receive the sidewalk list. Unfortunately, every year I always go over the budget. I'm hoping one year this council will, <laughs> will just give me the entire budget, <laughs> but uh, that's not gonna happen. But uh, I do have to shave off uh, a few thousand dollars off that list. So I will look over this list. I'll see which one of the most uh, uh, priority ones that are very dangerous to the public. And we'll choose those um, sidewalk and then push up to 21. Um, unfortunately, the storm that we received in August uh, really set us back um, with the budget and whatnot. And uh, we do have a lot of storm damage um, throughout the city, but specifically in the ninth ward, we do have uh, some good infrastructure infrastructure damage, uh, road, curbs, sidewalks, some big trees that they, they come down um, and, ca and, and cause a lot of damage, not only to our infrastructure, but also property owners as well. Road paving, I just sent out an email, I'm just trying to get an idea of timeline when these roads will be paved. I know it's happening um, soon, so just be, be, be patient with us um, and just be mindful any signs that you see out there posted um, uh, on the streets that are being paved. Uh, so I'm excited about that piece. Um, and lastly, I just wanna thank everyone who participated in the, the ninth and 10th Ward yard sale. It was great to go out there and to see a lot, ton of participation. So a lot of people out there, it was great uh, given 
given this year, um, it's always good to go out there and see seeing something positive and just seeing something that that uh, uh, gets people get their mind off of this current pandemic. Um, I encourage everyone to please continue to be safe. Um, you know, um, it's scary out there. Um, please be cautious. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Um, and just take care of yourself and your family and um, just be mindful of others as well. Um, I can always be reached at 908-986-6100 uh, or you can email me at amedina at linden-nj.org. You can also text me as well. Um, so with that being said, um, just have a great evening. Continue to be safe. And again, that, that, will, be, that will conclude my report. Now, Mr. President, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Councilwoman Gretchen Hickey, 10th Ward. Thank you, Council President. Well, at least um, Councilman Medina and uh, Councilwoman Orman, I think, saved me a few words. I'd like to reiterate the same sentiments that they had regarding garbage cans, storm drains, uh, not keeping them blocked. Um, I'm hoping to receive a delivery from um, Public Works this week of leaf bags. That's a hint, John Vendetto. Um, and I can't believe I'm going to talk about dog waste too. I actually got a phone call the other day that a resident, and I haven't gone to their home or said anything yet, but I'm hoping they just get the hint and maybe you're listening. They actually um, take the dog waste from their property and put it on school line. So, I mean, please people, we need a little respect here. We try to keep the words nice. You know, all of us work very, very hard. Please respect the cleanliness for the kids, for, for just your neighbors. It's so unnecessary. Uh, last night, I did have an incident. Um, I left the meeting early at 10 to 11 p.m. And um, up at the corner by my home, Myrtle and Inwood, uh, a resident was walking their dog. And there was several teenagers in um, a vacant home that still had vehicles in the driveway. And they were doing things they weren't supposed to. And they threatened uh, my resident um, that if they came back around the corner again, they would kill her. Um, I, 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 I don't even know what to say anymore about this. I do have to commend the police department as much as they have going on. We had five cars here and everyone knows me. I went right up there because I'm just, I want the police officers to know who I am too. And I want them to know that, you know, I'm not going to put up with this here. Uh, it's just out of hand. Um, all the issues that have been going on in our city. And I, last night at our caucus meeting, I um, expressed my feelings regarding everything going on in the city. I know many residents have been disappointed because they have not heard much, which there's many police issues we can't talk about. But I was very, very happy to see today um, that uh, the Chief Hart and Mayor, Mayor Armstead came out with a very um, great acknowledgement to our residents, um, which is what they needed to hear. They just needed to know. It isn't about how we're handling things are going on things, but they just needed a cushion from the leaders in our city. Uh, and I didn't put anything out there because it, it just wasn't my place out of respect for both of you. But I think, I think your statement was very appropriate and the residents certainly appreciated. Uh, with that being said, I am very concerned about our police department. Our officers are tired. Um, they're being put through a lot of work and we do spend money in our city. And as though things aren't that great, I have personally requested that we hire at least, and this is being conservative. And I know no one likes to hear this number, but 24 police officers, we are going off a compliment of police officers, um, from 2008, we just had statistics, 131 officers. Today, we have 139. We have high rises going up, apartments all over the place, another thousand coming, and we need the officers on the street. 
because we can't take away from everybody else who all these neighborhoods when these big issues are going on. Our, our residents want to see, they want to see cars going down their street and patrols and to know that they're safe. And it's unfortunate that it, it, it's not happening right now. And the chief, the chief needs us as council. We find money to spend in a lot of other places, but we needed to put it into the safety of our residents and our families and um, give our officers a break. It's not an easy job that they have. Um, I have to give my deepest sympathies to Jessica Sheehy and her family. Her mom, I'm sure if I wasn't, I don't think I'd be a councilwoman. This is Sheehy, we all were in the second ward and she started myself and my, I think my brother in second grade delivering literature all around. Uh, I learned it straight from the, the best person, really good person. She's always treated my kids and spoiled them and given them money and clay. And Jessica, I know how you doted on your mother. She would get the sniffles and you'd be in a panic meltdown um, years ago. And my heart just breaks for you and, and all the kids. And I, I truly am, am very, very sorry. Um, not much more. I, I just really wanna thank the third, uh, first responders throughout the city. We've heard statistic numbers last night extremely, extremely busy. Not only police department, but fire department. Our COVID numbers are going up a little. I want everybody to please be careful. Um, I wanna wish Chase Orman a happy birthday and thank everyone for my 50th birthday wishes that I just celebrated. I'm gonna tell everybody that I'm 60, so they say you look good. And um, all the departments, DPW, you've been a great help, construction code, a great help this week. and. I just wish everybody lots of blessings and to be safe out there, especially um, especially our police department. Um, anything you need, please call me, 908-347-4548. You could text me, and I hope everyone has a good night. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. I, too, would like to express my uh, deepest condolences to Jessica, Nick, and the whole entire Sheehy family, uh, Karen, did so much for this city. Um, first time I met Karen was when I married my husband. Uh, she was like an icon down in public work. She was like a mother to many of the men that worked there. And, you know, she, words cannot express the sympathy we have for her family. She did so much for so many people. So Jessica and Nick and the entire Sheehy family, our deepest condolences. Okay, I also wanted to mention, uh, wish a happy retirement to Dennis Ganlin from our Parking and Transportation Department. Okay, and we're going a little bit out of order here this evening. Uh, since we've been in virtual meetings, uh, we haven't really had any presentations or anything, but I didn't want this to go by. Uh, this past month, we on October 10th, we had a 100th birthday in the city of Linden for Wilbur Taylor of the fourth ward. Uh, many of the uh, emergency services participated in a car drive-by for his 100th birthday. We were trying to get 100 vehicles to pass the house. Uh, Mayor Armstead and several of the council members were there, Councilman Muhammad, Councilwoman Caldwell, uh, to wish Mr. Taylor a happy birthday. So without further ado, I'd like to read the resolution for his birthday. Whereas Wilbur R. Taylor was born in Elizabeth, New Jersey on October 10th, 1920, one of 10 children and is a graduate of the Elizabeth school system. And whereas with the outbreak of World War II, Wilbur enlisted in the army and proudly served his country. And whereas after returning home to Elizabeth from gallantly serving his country, Wilbur married Elizabeth Betty Powell and started their family, which would eventually include eight children and where they would live for many years. And whereas in 1961, Wilbur, Betty and family bought a house in Linden at Lincoln Street and East Henry Street. Their new home, which was in a family community is where all of the children played together and the parents looked after each other's children. And whereas Wilbur was a dedicated employee of the Linden General Motors plant, where he worked for 40 years and seven months. 
retiring on January 1st, 1993. And whereas after the passing of Betty in 1988, Wilbert unselfishly dedicated his life to the raising of his family, children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. And whereas it is proper and fitting that Wilbert R. Taylor be recognized for the special mark that he has made on the lives of his family and community as a generous and caring individual on the occasion of his 100th birthday. Now therefore be resolved by the mayor and council of the city of Linden that they join in honoring Wilbur R. Taylor for the amazing person he is and congratulate him on the magnificent milestone of his 100th birthday and be a further resolve that this resolution be entered into the minutes of the council of the city of Linden, a copy to be presented to him in recognition of the foregoing. It is signed Mayor Derek Armstead and Council President Michelle Yamakaitis. Okay, Mayor, will you please see that uh, we get a that resolution dropped to uh, Mr. Taylor? Yes, no problem, uh, Council President. Okay, I'm sure you and Councilman Muhammad will make sure it happens. Okay, um, Mayor, I'm going to move on to your report this evening. Yes, thank you, Council President. I have a number of things I'd like to talk about. Um, first, I'd like to start off with uh, my condolences to the uh, Carter family. Um, we lost a, an icon from our community just, 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 just a few days back, um, and Deacon Melvin Carter. Um, he was a deacon at First Baptist Church. Uh, deacon Carter uh, served as a Marine, and he was in the U.S. Air Force. Uh, and he um, also served as a corrections officer for over 30 years. Uh, uh, Deacon Carter uh, will be missed. Uh, Deacon Carter was also an avid basketball fan. Um, we would always go to the Linden High School games, he, myself, uh, Mark Manuza, and several others. And after the games, we'd all go out to eat uh, with the coach and some of the players and just hang out for uh, hours on end. You know, uh, and we, he was just a nice guy to be around uh, and a very uh, knowledgeable person with regards to the whole uh, political arena in this town. And, 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 and he, I'm thankful that I had the opportunity to be in his presence uh, because he certainly helped me to navigate through some of the pitfalls in this business that I deal with and helped me to understand more uh, the, the importance of being independent and, and uh, putting community first. So Deacon Carter, you will be, you'll be missed. And uh, your, to your family, um, again, my condolences. Um, I'm going to have a few condolences tonight because we've lost a few great people as well uh, in my political arena. Uh, my condolences to, to Pauline Blahuda and her family. Uh, I've known Pauline Blahuda, well, even even before I got got involved in politics, uh, because my grandmother and grandfather were committee people in this town, uh, and they served with Pauline Blahuda down in the Seventh Ward. Uh, in fact, I got my first taste of politics in the Seventh Ward. Um, and my grandmother and grandfather worked side by side with Pauline. Um, they, they were very good friends. They spent many hours together um, as committee people uh, and they worked together uh, for the betterment of this town. So my condolences are out to uh, the Blahuda family. Uh, Pauline, uh, she was like, a, like the iron lady. Uh, she was tough when it came to politics and, uh, and that's, um, it came in, in politics at a time, things were just a lot different, you know. Uh, and uh, I'll segue into last but certainly not least, um, my condolences to Karen Sheehy's family. Uh, that would be Jessica and her husband and, and the children. Um, when I first ran for office, uh, Karen was our campaign manager. Uh, and I've often said and in, um, in this business, the toughest part of this job sometimes is keeping people together. Uh, Karen uh, was charged with that responsibility. And I got to tell you, when you have, it wasn't just the council members, it was others, it was committee people, it was department heads, and then everybody had their own idea how things should be done. But there's one person who has to try to hold everything together. Uh, and, and, and that's the, usually the campaign manager. Uh, and, the, uh, and, and that was Karen Sheehy. She was a, a leader for us all. Uh, without even holding elected office. Uh, she worked uh, down at DPW and she commanded the respect of all the men and women who worked there. Uh, and uh, in fact, she added value uh, to that operation. Uh, you wanted something done, you called Karen. Uh, she really knew how to get things done. 
and she knew the inner workings of the political environment uh, as well. Uh, she will be missed. Um, I will be the first to admit that when I used to go off the rails, Karen had to rein me back in, you know, and she, she goes, you can't do that, Derek. You know, so, uh, but she used to call me Dare, not Derek, Dare. She said, Dare, I gotta talk to you. And she would always get that phone call from her. Uh, but she'll be missed and, uh, you know, and, uh, and, I, and I hope her and her family, I hope the family, I wish them well and uh, my heart and condolences go out to them as well. I'd like to personally wish Mr. Wilbur Taylor happy birthday. Again, we were over to his house last week. Mr. Taylor is an extraordinary individual. Um, I call him one of my original constituents. I mean, you know, I've been in this business for over 27 years and I've seen the fourth ward change considerably. Uh, but Mr. Taylor is still an icon over there on the corner of Lincoln and Henry Street, right across the street from the Mules, <laughs> Monique Cardwell's family. So um, it's a um, it was a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have to be ha being a councilman and serving a community for people like Mr. Taylor. Uh, Mr. Taylor worked down at General Motors uh, where he retired from General Motors, and uh, he was very good friends with my uncle who worked down there. Uh, my uncle, my uncle Ralph worked in security down at uh, General Motors. So uh, everybody knew everybody in this town and that's, and that's a good thing. Uh, and um, we appreciate the advice uh, and the knowledge that people like Mr. Wilbur Taylor gave us as we knocked door to door. Uh, and and uh, God bless him uh, as he turned 100 years old. We all should be so lucky to be 100 years old, look so good, have our faculties and be able to walk and, uh, and, and do most anything that we wanna do at 100 years old. So God bless you, Mr. Taylor, and, and you and your family and to me, may you continue to have health and prosperity. Okay, now we're gonna get down to some serious business here. Um, I'd like to first start off with a, um, uh, an email that I received from the uh, superintendent of schools, Dr. Marnie ha Hazleton. Uh, the, the letter reads as follows, dear parents and guardians, this notice is to inform you that our Linden Public School families that to our, I'm sorry, this notice to inform our Linden Public School families that an elementary school student has tested positive for COVID-19. The student attended just one half day of, of in-person learning at school number eight on October 13th. The student later tested positive on October 18th and has shown no symptoms. The student has not returned to school since October 13th and is under quarantine. The Linden Department of Health has performed a contact tracing Following the Department of, Health, Department of Health's recommendation and guidelines, we will not be quarantining the child's school or class. The classroom has been thoroughly disinfected above and beyond our normal cleaning protocols. All students in the child's class were wearing masks, sitting behind desk shields and social distancing, following all the district health and safety guidelines. We thank the child's parents for following health protocols by keeping the child at home from the time the child was exposed to the virus. We encourage all of our families to take similar precautions in relation to possible exposures. This case did not require notification, but we are informing you out of the abundance of transparency. Keeping everyone safe and healthy is a team effort. We ask our school community to practice protective measures after hours on weekends and on days off in order to maintain a safe environment at school. We will continue to communicate with our Linden Public School community in an open and transparent manner while respecting confidentiality. Thank you for your patience and understanding as we continue to navigate through these circumstances together. And it's signed uh, Dr. Marnie Hazleton, the superintendent of schools. Uh, and while we're on the topic of COVID, um, there has been an uptick. I can't help. It sounds so damn good. Yeah, and it propelled me into this world of being able to Okay, I hear, I hear somebody. and wanting to... somebody's TV is on, I guess, I don't know. Okay. Um, while we're on the topic of um, COVID-19, we do have a small uptick uh, in our positive cases in, in Linden, um, but it's not alarming. Uh, and I, I would advise anyone who has any concern to go to our website and you can get the daily updates um, as to where we are at with the uh, virus. Um, I want to mention also that our food uh, a COVID food relief program is still in effect. Um, we uh, continue to deliver. We have over 300 households that we deliver to. Um, today, we were fortunate enough to 
be able to deliver to all the seniors. We delivered to the three senior buildings on Dill Avenue, and we delivered to the senior building on the corner of Cranford and Dill Avenue. Uh, and the food was greatly, greatly appreciated. And uh, we will continue to do so um, as food comes in. Uh, we not only do we deliver to the seniors, but we have a list of over 300 people who we deliver to. Uh, while we're still on COVID, I'm going to talk about the uh, Halloween activities, according to the governor, can proceed. But uh, there are some, a few things that I'd like to uh, just mention with regards to trick-or-treat. Uh, that, that have been disseminated by the governor's office. So trick-or-treaters must properly wear a mask that covers their nose and mouth. Costume masks do not count. They should remain near their homes. Limit the number, the total number of houses they visit and travel only with immediate family members and should comply with all social distancing guidelines. Residents giving out candy should distribute commercially packaged treats in a way that does not involve multiple children repeatedly reaching their hands into the same bowl. Placing treats on a tray is a good example of how to safely do it. In addition, it is suggested that neighbors coordinate to develop a system to distinguish homes participating in trick-or-treating from those who do not wish to participate. For outdoor trunk or treating, the Department of Health is recommending a, a limit on the number of particip participating cars to avoid overcrowding and allow for social distancing. The event should be designed in a long line instead of a circle to discourage overcrowding. So one thing that residents can do, and it was mentioned by the eighth ward council person, if they're not participating, they should keep their lights off and they should not have outside decorations. Um, I would say look forward from um, the governing body for us to um, have some hours for trick-or-treating to, to be announced. Okay, moving right along. I'd like to talk about the Linden Drive-In movie um, that we had down at the airport. Uh, they were a complete and total success. Uh, they were enjoyed by all who attended. Um, and Mother Nature was definitely on our side and she blessed us with good weather. Uh, we had four evenings uh, that there were no rain, not a cloud in the sky, and the temperatures the temperature was, was actually very uh, good for an outdoor, outdoor event. Um, I want to personally thank Paul Dudley, who's our fixed base operator at the, at the airport. I want to personally thank the Mayor's Youth Commission, uh, Sandy Jackson and uh, Rebecca <coughs> uh, Titoli, my secretary. I want to thank Brad and Josh from Public Properties for uh, uh, ha having the camera present for us. I'd like to thank public property as a whole for being there. I'd like to thank the Linden Police Department for their assistance, fire prevention, uh, and once again, public properties and, and, and strike sound uh, for providing us with the sound. I'm gonna move right along into some, some development type of issues. Um, uh, we've been in discussion with a potential uh, suitor or developer for um, a battery store, energy storage um, system here in Linden. Uh, the location that we'd like to use would be the property adjacent to our landfill uh, and behind the Theobelia um, nail polish factory. Um, the devil's in the detail, uh, but we're certainly um, looking forward to the prospect of having an additional uh, source of revenue, a source of income for our city. Again, um, we are um, you know, constantly looking at ways to uh, increase revenues uh, so that we can continue to uh, be able to keep our taxes at bay and in fact continue to lower taxes. So we'll be meeting again uh, early next week to further discuss that potential uh, project. It has to do with battery storage unit. And again, it's suited right next to the landfill where we will have our solar panels. So as you can see, it's a, it's a good fit having both of them, both of them there. Um, Moving right along, I'd like to talk about the Special Improvement District. There is a plan, uh, we're looking at plans, should I say, to um, refurbish the facades uh, on Wood Avenue and the Special Improvement District. Now the devil's in the detail, uh, we're, in a, we're in very preliminary and early stages, um, but the initial um, change will be made from Knopf Street uh, to Elm Street, but uh, we're going to, 
essentially do the whole uh, special improvement district. Uh, and this will be a very good thing as, as the developments continue to occur in Linden, the, um, the, 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 the need to um, make sure that the facades on Wood Avenue are nice will, will be even more prevalent. So uh, we think that the developments in Wood Avenue will feed off of each other and that's, and that's a good thing. So uh, we'll be um, reaching out again to the Special Improvement District and talking to um, potential uh, suitors who can do that type of work so that in the next uh, couple of year or so we'll have that taken care of. So once again, I'm gonna move on to some other things that are, beg your pardon? Oh, yes, um, that's gonna come next. Uh, I'm going to go into um, my mayor's report, basically uh, announcing some things that are happening. Uh, last week, our planning board granted site plan and subdivision approval uh, for drive-through Starbucks located at our new Legacy Square shopping center right near the Super Walmart. The planning board also provided a site plan approval for a medical building located in the same Legacy Square shopping center. Uh, the projected tenants are AFC, Urgent Care, and Aspen Dental. Um, it's very comforting and exciting to know that we have uh, such a diverse set of businesses that are coming into that particular development. Unfortunately, when we talk about growth, we have to talk about change as well. Uh, our, our city continues to grow uh, and sometimes some of the older businesses um, uh, become antiquated and, uh, they, and they sometimes go out of business or have to relocate. Uh, such is the case um, with the former Walmart property. Uh, Walmart was uh, at the um, located on Avenue C and uh, when they left and went to the new Walmart, I mean, it basically killed that mall. The mall was, wow. which was actually dying anyway. Um, but the good, on the flip side of that, um, we have a developer called Centerpoint uh, applying for site plan approval at our next planning board meeting in November. They'd like to build a 315,000 square foot warehouse at this location. Now, I understand that some people are concerned uh, about warehousing, but from a long-term financial point of view, the future of uh, warehousing is, is, it continues to look brighter. Um, before um, COVID-19, the um, e-commerce market share was about 12%. Um, today, which is eight months later, it's over 20%. So e-commerce con continues to be the direction uh, that things are uh, moving into. So, uh, and again, we are fortunate to have, uh, we are fortunate to have opportunity and developers who want to develop in the city, um, which will continue the likelihood of, a, of the city maintaining zero tax increases in the long term horizon. Uh, and I, I can't begin to tell you how many other mayors call me and they're asking us, how are we doing this? How are we doing it? Well, a lot of it has to do with the incoming developments that are, that are continuing to come in and uh, just fiscal fiscal conservativeness. And I, and I see us uh, as being able to introduce a budget again uh, that I will be very proud of uh, and that this council should be proud of. Uh, okay, early this evening, uh, we had ordinance 6447, a hearing uh, on, on hearing, and it's a reference to the former Siemens mattress factory located at 2525 Brunswick Avenue, right near the entrance of I-278, which connects to the turnpike. Now, this existing building is over 100 years old, and the developer, Seaman uh, Holdings, plans to build a 500,000 square foot warehouse. Now, the beauty of this development, and I'll just get some numbers here for you. Uh, the beauty of this development is that if we left it like it was, collecting taxes as, as we would normally collect taxes, um, over the next 30 years, we'd collect $7.75 million. That's leaving it like it is. With the new construction, even with a pilot program, that number goes to $37.1 million in revenues. So, you know, I, I get it sometimes when council members want to say no and they want to vote no on something and they want to say no pilot but i encourage people to do their due diligence because if we didn't offer him this pilot he wouldn't build it and we'd still collect we'd, we'd have a, a raggedy um warehouse old 100 year old warehouse down there and again 7.75 million versus 37.1 million uh, that number is tremendous 
So we need to do our due diligence sometimes before we start talking and, and um, voting no on pilot programs. We've, we've got to know what you're voting on. You've got to know what you're voting on. So moving right along, I'm going to um, talk about another development that we have. Mayor, yeah. your time. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm going to need more time. I'm so sorry. There's just, there's just too much going on uh, at this level um, that the people just need, to, the people should know about. Um, we're going to talk about RNG energy. Uh, ordinance number 64-48. Um, we, um, this is Linden Renewable Energy, RNG. Now, again, I, I urge council members, if, you know, if you're not sure about something and you want to know about a pilot program, you want to know do some cost analysis, you, you can give us a call. We'll be more than glad to give you the information. Uh, we're talking about uh, a piece of land that would generate $12.8 million. Uh, that's a total municipal portion of the, of, the, of the tax revenue that we would receive over 30 years, $12.8 million if we left it alone. But we're fortunate enough to have a company that wants to come in and uh, they've been working with Union County, which because Union County controls the solid waste management plan uh, for, for, for the county. Uh, and they're going to, over 30 years, pay us $39.4 million uh, over the 30-year period. Now, we also have a host community benefit tied into this particular deal. So that number could go up, uh, depending on the amount of um, uh, solid waste that they, uh, they, they process. So again, I, I just ask those who vote no, to understand why they're voting no and not just vote no uh, because it's, it's, it, they think it's cavalier uh, and, and they think it's, you know, you're gonna impress the public by saying, I'm voting no because I'm not, I'm, I'm against tax abatements or pilots. I mean, unfortunately pilots are, are the order of the day right now. And um, it, it's, our, it's my job as, as the um, chief executive officer, as the, as the mayor to move these projects along and, uh, and, and we encourage pilots uh, when we feel that they're going to benefit the city. So last but certainly not least, um, we have had a number of violent crimes uh, committed in our community over the last few weeks. Um, and the, I, I just want the public to know that we are not sitting by and watching this and not doing anything about it. Now, often people say, hey, well, how come the mayor is not saying anything? What's the mayor doing? What is the chief doing? You know, but you have to understand when you have the type of things that are occurring in our community, like, like have occurred, we have to take a different type of approach. We can't get on, the, on a soapbox and start telling the criminals what we're doing. Sometimes we, gotta, we have to sit back, formulate a plan and a strategy and, and, and put it into action. And, um, and, and that's exactly what we have been doing, uh, despite the fact that there's still a number of things, a uh, number of people who, are, who are continue to be bad actors in our community. I just want the, the, the residents to know that we are doing some things. Uh, we, we, Councilman Muhammad talked earlier about the lighting uh, in Fourth Ward Park. We, we play, replaced all the lighting in Fourth Ward Park with LED lights, and now the park is lit up. We plan on doing that in all the parks changing the lighting. We, we're, concerned, we're, we're, we're currently evaluating all the lights now. Um, we plan on putting cameras in parks. Um, we've uh, we had our, a preliminary meeting, in fact, two meetings uh, to address the cameras and we're gonna do it on, on a case by case basis, an as needed basis. We're not gonna start putting cameras in because somebody says they want cameras. We're gonna do it where we, we feel the problems are at. Uh, we're gonna be working closer with our residents. We have residents who live around these parks and we're encouraging them to use the, their camera systems and, and to give the police access to these camera systems when an event such as a crime occurs. So um, that being said, again, the chief and I, we prepared a joint statement uh, and I'm going to ask Chief Hart uh, to, uh, as I conclude my report, I'm gonna ask Chief Hart to read that joint statement for the public uh, and, and, and hopefully um, and we, it's, it's an effort to reassure the public that we are very much aware of what's going on and we have every intention on uh, making this a safe community for all. So Chief, you have my, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor, hello all. 
Uh, this is a statement that came out uh, this afternoon from the mayor and myself. The violent crimes that have plagued our community over recent weeks have understandably caused feelings of fear, anxiety among residents. Each of us has a fundamental right to feel safe in our home and violence like this can never be accepted as routine. Residents, you need to know that we are doing everything possible to protect you and your family. Our police officers are working around the clock to stop these criminals to take illegal guns off of our streets. This month alone, we have arrested 14 violent criminals and seized five illegal firearms. We have increased patrols in high-risk areas, and we create a task force specifically focused on this problem. We've been working closely with our law enforcement partners at the local, county, and state levels, as well as, well as with our private sector partners like PSE and G, who recently replaced the dull, outdated lighting in Fourth Ward Park with brighter, high-efficiency LED lights. There are plans to upgrade the lighting in additional parks. We are in the process of expanding our public camera system into more parks. Regardless of what measures we take, however, our most valuable tool to stop crime is you. Stopping this violence requires a strong and continued partnership between the public and the police. Residents are encouraged to cooperate with police officers by giving them access to their home video camera footage if something occurs and by sharing important information about criminal activity in whatever way they feel most comfortable. This criminal element is knowingly putting our loved ones in danger. They do not share our values and we need to make it clear to them in no uncertain terms that we are not afraid, we will not shelter you, we will not protect you, and we will not tolerate what you are doing to our community. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Council President, that, that concludes my report. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Okay, we're gonna move on to resolutions. We have resolutions 2022-95 through 2023-22. Okay, can I have a motion for approval of Resolutions 295 through 322. Council President, I move for approval of uh, all those resolutions and ask for a second. Second. Mrs. Orman. Is there no problem? Huh? Mrs. Orman. Yes. Davi. Yes. Caldwell. Yes. Mohammed. Yes. Ms. Cosby. What are we voting for? The first and the second or all of them at the same time? I thought we did discussion before the vote. Supposed to have your raise your hand for discussion after we have a, a motion and a second. First, right? right. Okay, so, all right, well, this, I'm just gonna tell you how I'm voting because I don't even understand what's happening right now. I'm gonna abstain on 295, 297, I'm abstaining. I'm voting no for 304, no for 307, because I can, and I understand the reasons why, but I'm so tired of being chastised by the Armsteads. I'm standing on 315. I'm absolutely voting no on 320. And yeah, I'm up standing on 321. I wanted to discuss 305 because I thought there was gonna be a presentation, which is what I had asked for, but nobody told me it wouldn't be. And I'll vote yes to the rest. Well, yes to 305 too, but yes to the rest. Mr. Roman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Clerk. Give me a moment. Um, I'm not even going to light up. Uh, I will. No to 321. 
and yes, the rest. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? No to 321, yes to the rest. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Okay, we're going to move on to ordinances on first reading. We're going to begin with ordinance 6452. We're going to restart that. An ordinance to amend an ordinance entitled an ordinance establishing scheduled titles, salary ranges, and regulations for maintaining the classification and salary standardization plan of all employees of the city of Linden, passed August 15, 1995, and approved August 16, 1995, adding Schedule 4007. Okay, can we have a motion, please? <laughs> Can we have a motion, please? Council President, I make a motion to uh, introduce 64-52 and ask for a second. Second. Yeah, Council President, I, uh, why did uh, 64 Councilman jump in front of me before he even had a chance to talk? That was assigned to me. I am not sure, Councilman. Uh, Mr. Roman, would you like to explain that? Yes, Councilman Strano, there was a 10 second delay there and I wasn't sure. I uh, to have in front of me who was uh, responsible for introducing, but I just took it upon my liberty uh, to move things along. I apologize if you felt uh, snided in any way. It was not my intention. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Ms. Orman. Mrs. Orman. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Javik. Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? I'm going no for 6452. Roman? Yes. Toronto? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 6453. An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 7 traffic of an ordinance entitled An Ordinance Adopting and Enacting the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Linden, 1999. Passed November 23rd, 1999, and approved November 24th, 1999, and as amended and supplemented. Can we have a motion, please? Can we have a motion, please? I just get, oh, I'm sorry. Council President, I'd like to make a motion to introduce and ask for a second, please. Second. Sometimes it's hard not knowing whether the mic is on or not. Now that was a second delight. Yeah. Mrs. Armand? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mrs. Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. yes. Ordinance 6454. Bond ordinance providing appropriation of $55,000 for the acquisition of Y-Star Waste Management software and hardware for the Division of Public Works and authorizing the issuance of $52,250 in bonds or notes of the city for financing part of the appropriation. Can we have a motion, please? Yes, Council President. I would really like to introduce ordinance number 6454 and ask for a second. Second. 
Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. Uh, Deputy Clerk. Thank you. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Medina? Yes. Councilman Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Ordinance 64 to 55. Ordinance Chapter 7, Traffic Section 22, entitled One Way Streets. Section 7 20, One Way Streets, should be amended as follows. Add West 15th Street in the east direction from South Central Street to Southwood Avenue and Alexander Avenue in the north direction from Dill Avenue to East St. George Avenue. Okay, can we have a motion, please? Yes, Council President, I'd like to make a motion to introduce Ordinance Number 6455 and ask for a second, please. Second. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Cald Caldwell? Yes. Mohammed? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Roman? Yes. yes. Strano? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Medina? Yes. Is that a yes or a no? Yes. Yes, please. Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis? Yes. Okay, we're going to move on to comments from members of the public in attendance on city business only. Again, we're going to ask no personal, political, or derogatory comments, not to exceed three minutes. Members of the public who may be attending are on mute until this portion of the meeting. If you wish to be recognized, please use the raised hand icon in the program to identify yourself. You will then give your name and address as at any council meeting. Failure to do so will result in your being muted and not recognized further. If you are registered more than once, you will only be recognized to speak one time under your first registration as with any council meeting. When the public comment portion is open, the ability to register will be closed at that time. So please, anybody who would like to speak, please raise your hand from the attendees. Okay, we have um, two attendees with their hands raised. Okay, I'm going to start first with Anthony Mislon. Please state your name and address for the record, please, sir. Uh, Anthony Mislin, 444 Inwood Road. Go ahead, sir. Uh, just a quick question. I noticed that uh, Councilman Roman is in council chambers and looks like there is a setup there with the plexiglass. Is there any time frame on when we'll get back to in-person meetings. I haven't heard anything mentioned. I don't know if uh, the current COVID uh, standards uh, prevent that from happening, but I was just wondering, just noticing that. Seems like it's set up so far. Um, Mr. Mislon? Mr. Mislon, our yeah. city clerk is gonna uh, address that for us. Right now, we have to follow the various COVID rules, which limit indoor access to the room. And when you put the council people and the um, department heads in, it leaves very few seats for the public. The alternative then would be to find another location where social distancing can occur. Um, this method seems to allow us to have more public participation. I'm looking at there's over 20 members of the public attending this meeting at this point. Okay, thank you very much. Um, also, um, the mayor Arm said I heard you say before about the, the food that was delivered to the senior buildings. Where where did that come from? Was that a farm or, or something along those lines? Mayor? Yes, it came from a farm. That was a farm and that was something that, that we reached out as a city and, and um, received? Uh, no, the they reach out to me because they know that I run a, a, a food program, a COVID relief program. 
Okay, and that, that was different than the, the boxes that were being sent out by President Trump uh, with a letter from him directly? I, I have no idea of any, any letter from President Trump. No, okay, that's what I thought, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, Jeff Clark. Please state your name and address for the record. You need to unmute yourself, sir. Jeffrey Clark, 15 Northwood Avenue. Go ahead, sir. Okay, this is uh, regarding resolution 289. I just have a statement to make. <clears throat> the city of Linden is a very diverse city in many ways. One of them being financially, we have residents that are poor, struggling, average income and people who are comfortable. I'm sure the elected officials know who they represent. The citizens of Linden, not potential citizens. What about the Linden residents? They should come first. The Clark property on the corner of Northwood Avenue and West Elizabeth Avenue offers a quick check, a sub shop, Carvel, a pharmacy, a check cashing, dollar store, barber shop, beauty salon, laundromat, and up until recently, a full size sit down restaurant. Uh, it offers food and services to all walks of life. This strip mall serves the needs of all Linden residents, even the ones getting on the train or off the train. Centrally located in Linden, it helps the Linden residents to cash a check, get food, medication, take their kids for ice cream, wash their clothes, get an air cut, and much more. Why take this away from the residents to put up more condos when there are so many others being built in the surrounding area? My family has owned that property for almost 100 years. My grandfather, Fred Wood, developed the property in the 1920s. Wood Avenue was named after my great-grandfather. We oppose this resolution to have the property taken away from us via eminent domain. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, Robert Stutro. I just want to take this opportunity to, I know you had your hand up last night, but you had come in after we had finished a public comment section. So um, I apologize for you not being able to speak last night, but we have to follow the order of the meeting. That was the caucus meeting. Tonight, um, you have three minutes to speak. Please state your name and address for the record, sir. You need to unmute yourself. You need to unmute yourself, sir. Robert Scutro. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, Robert Scutro, 416 Helen Street. <coughs> I have a question. I keep hearing each time the council meetings about the 30 year tax abatements and how after 30 years, how much we're gonna receive. I'm requesting from the mayor and all council members to show me how much the citizens are gonna receive from the first year and every year for the 30 years. So I'm requesting that the council and mayor show me on paper how much we're gonna receive for the next 30 years. And also I'm gonna request that you show me the expenditures, all projects are gonna cost in the city, including uh, hiring of firemen, police officers, uh, police vehicles, fire trucks, road widenings, pavement, school expenses. I know it doesn't come under the city's expense, but we're still gonna to have to pay for it, taxpayers. So I'm requesting that you all get together and show me in writing how much is going to cost the taxpayers to do all this and how much going to, how much the taxes are going to be for each year. Mr. Bonnick has my email address. If you have any questions, have Mr. Bonnick contact me or the mayor's office. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Scutro. 
Um, I'm sure we will get that information from the mayor's office as far as the development, and we'll see what we can work up for you from the treasurer's office with some numbers. Okay, um, can I have a motion to close the public comment portion of the meeting? That's all moved. I made a motion, Council President, to close. Okay. Okay. Mrs. Orman. Yes. Yes. Javik. Yes. Caldwell. Yes. Mohammed. Yes. Crosby. Yes. Roman. Yes. Grano. Yes. Blaine. Yes. Medina. Yes. Hickey. Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis. Yes. Okay, we're going to move on to comments and member meetings. We're going to move on to comments from members of the governing. Hold on one moment, please. Yes. Uh, normally we don't do this after we ask for a sign-in sheet. Uh, I had asked for everyone to please raise their hand in the public portion comment. We did close the public portion comment of the meeting, Mr. Antonelli. Um, we have somebody that came in with their hand raised after the fact here. Thank you, Council President. So yeah, I, I happened to notice that as well. I just wasn't sure if that was after actually the motion to close the public session. So, uh, you know, to the- Our extent, IT department just verified it as well as some of the council members. So then in that particular instance, because the public comment uh, has been closed, uh, you don't have to recognize that individual. Okay. The hand was raised after we already started the roll call. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna move on to uh, comments from members of the Governing body, please use your raised hand icon if you'd like to speak. Okay, I'm seeing Councilwoman Cosby, go ahead. I just wanted to say, um, I missed the whole opportunity to discuss the items before the vote, but that, that's okay, I voted the way I intended to. I just wanted to make sure the public was aware, resolution 320, is some kind of weird uh, attempt at not requiring the basic education, which was a policy that we put in place when I was on the personnel committee, requiring high school diploma or the equivalent as a basic for all city positions, no matter what civil service says. So the new policy manual has a, a, a new policy that gives the city council the authority to require certain education only in the posting, not the job description, or ignore education that's not in the policy of the posting. And also I wanted to say that when it comes to the technology for these meetings, I said before, people don't want to register. I took screenshots of every single participant's email address. And if I could see that, it's a shame because that's what I, was my fear, that you make people register so you can get their email addresses and then start spamming them. Like we get spams about this stupid column one for the Board of Education, which I've been called four times and the people are rude. I'm over it and I'm just annoyed that my personal information, because I've registered for something, or put my phone number on something in the city of Linden, now I'm getting um, election solicitation that is unwelcome. So again, this needs to be a meeting where people could just log in, click a button and view it. They wanna make a comment then they should provide that um, a, a separate link for that. But this is just out of control. Everybody's mm -hmm. email is posted publicly. Councilman Javik. Uh, yes, Council President. I just want to uh, say my uh, heartfelt condolences to the Behold family and the Shigi family. Thank you much. Thank you, sir. 
Um, Councilwoman Ormond. Uh, yes, thank you, Council President. Um, I also would just like to express my condolences to the Flahuda family. Once again, she was a longtime friend of my grandmother's. And I would also like to ex express my condolences to the Sheehy family because um, we have a very personal relationship at this point through our children. And then last but not least, I would like to, come here, Chase. I would like, sit down. I would like to just publicly say that this guy is 20 years old today on the 20th of October. So this is his golden birthday. And I just wanna say to my heart, my heart beat, happy, happy birthday, Chase. He says his heart, yep. So happy birthday, Binka. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. Chase. Chase, can you hear? Wait, Chase, can you hear? Happy birthday, Chase. And I just want you to wait there for a few minutes. When we close this meeting, I know you love the roll calls. Okay. We're going to call. dedicate that last roll call when we close this meeting to you. Okay. So just wait there a few minutes. Okay. All right. Councilwoman Hickey. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, special happy birthday, Chase. I love seeing your smile behind your mom. Our meetings. I really do. And plus I miss my boys. So you're going to have to fill in. Um, but you know, I just want the public to know that I am not a cavalier. I, I certainly do do my homework. And after hearing um, all the fabulous numbers from the mayor and all the fabulous numbers I've heard over the past few years, I am extremely confident that we will be able to hire 24, at least, uh, as I said before, police officers to keep our residents, our streets, and our first responders safe. So, um, I'm sorry to put it on a note like that, especially after seeing cute Chase. But um, listen, I have to stand up for myself as well and what I believe in. We, we might not always, but we have to agree to disagree on certain things. I just don't believe our city can sustain uh, what we are building right now. We need a better plan instead of putting the horse or the, the har car before the horse. <coughs> Thank you, everybody. Have Thank a good you. day. Okay, Councilman Roman. Uh, thank you, Council President. I, I was unaware of Karen's passing. Um, I'm sorry to the Sheehy family. I, I lost a parent this year. Um, grief is the strongest human emotion. I hope that it's easy or gets easier for you. And um, I hope that you heal. Uh, happy birthday, Chase. And uh, I want to wish everyone uh, to stay safe. Uh, remember, we're not out of this pandemic. The numbers are growing. And they're getting worse. So please um, put back in your mind and be very cognizant. Also, I have a ton of masks. Um, if anyone needs masks, AM95, call me. 908-494-5784. I'll bring you some masks. That way you and your family can be safe. Um, I'll drop them off to you. So thank you, Council President. Thank you. Councilwoman Caldwell. Um, I just want to say condolences to Jessica Sheehy and her family. I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. Um, happy birthday, Chase. Happy 20th mm -hmm. birthday, Chase. Um, and I want to say happy 100th birthday again to Gran. Um, his name is Mr. Robert Tell. It's everyone else, but we used to call him Gran. I grew up with his granddaughters right across the street, and he would come home from GM and buy us ice cream and everything. So I, I'm so glad I was able to see um, Mr. Teller's 100th birthday. He's done so much. Um, he uh, lost one of his daughters when she was 40 years old, and he took in his four granddaughters and raised all four of them. So mm -hmm. taking care of family, like he, my mother always says to him, happy Mother's Day and happy Father's Day, because he's always been there for his family. And everyone stay safe. And just like Councilman Roman said, the numbers are rising. Like I said, I work for a hospital and they're getting prepared. So just be careful. Thank you, Councilwoman. Mayor Armstead. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Council President. Uh, two things I wanted to just bring up here real quick. Uh, and that is, I may have erred in my comments earlier, say there's a slight uptick. Um, 
Uh, but as I see it, as I looked at the new numbers just came across, there were six new cases of coronavirus in Linden today. There's a total of 1,632 cases in Linden. In August, there were 63 cases, new cases. September, there were 48 cases. And in October, there's 117 new cases. Wow. So significant uptick. And we need to be very mindful. And I just wanted to remind this governing body that any decisions that you've made with regards to not allowing certain activities to occur are the, are, are the right decision and you're prudent in your uh, efforts to keep our citizens safe. Um, uh, last but certainly not least, um, Councilman Cosby Hurling, I just wanted to rem remind you um, that- My name is Cosby, sir. It's Cosby. Cosby. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, my, my bad. Um, your name is in the voter data file with the phone number. So if anybody's texting you, it's because the, 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 the Union County Board of Elections has your nope. number. Okay, so it's there. But when you ask to come off the list- Councilwoman, you, you had your opportunity to speak. It's mayor has the floor. Right. I'm just okay. trying to make the truth that, be known that, though. That concludes my report, uh, my, my, my comments. Thank you, mayor. Okay. Um, Following council meetings will be as follows. Council conference meeting, Monday, November 9th, 2020 at 6 p.m. in the council conference room, City Hall. Council conference meeting prior to the meeting, Tuesday, November 10th, 6 p.m. in the council conference room in City Hall. The council meeting Tuesday, November 10th at 7 p.m. in the council chambers. Again, as the mayor and many of the council members have mentioned, our numbers are on the rise, so. Um, please check the website. Uh, you might have to do a virtual meeting again. The website is linden-nj.org and it will give you directions on how to participate electronically in the meetings if we need to. Okay, Chase, um, I'm gonna call for a motion to adjourn. This roll call is gonna be for you, Chase. Happy birthday. Okay, thank you. We okay. have a motion to adjourn. Like to make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Zorma. Yes. Javik. Yes. Yes. Baldwell. Yes. Mohammed. Yes. Cosby. Mrs. Cosby. Roman. Mr. Roman. Aye. Trano. Yes. Trano. Blaine. Mr. Blaine. Yes. Medina. Mr. Medina. Yes. Hickey. Hickey. Yes. Mrs. Yamakaitis. Yamakaitis. Yes. Happy birthday, Chase. Stay safe, everyone. Happy birthday, Chase. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs>